the match case future of Python 3.10 isn't the only exciting future. Now, it might be the most exciting future, but there are other very, very exciting futures in Python 3.10 that you should be aware of right now, because those futures are going to efficient your programs, and probably it is best to know them right now, because soon the Python 3.10 will be the only version that people will work with it. So in that video, I'm going to cover three exciting futures that are beyond the match case future that you should know right now. And by the way, if that is your first time on my channel, then welcome. If you will enjoy the content of this video, I would appreciate your thumbs up button so we can spread this video to more people. Let's dive into it. Now I will be showing what we used to do before Python 3.10 with this color scheme here, meaning more dark colors, but when I will go ahead and work on this monokai color scheme, meaning more bright and light colors, then this basically means that this is code that is executable only from Python 3.10 or above. So let's go ahead and get started with the first future. Alright, so the first feature of Python 3.10 is called Parenthesized Context Managers. Now, I do have a detailed video about context managers, if that's the first time you hear this concept. But in general, that's the ability to work with objects where some action is going to run in the background once Python gets out of the indentation. So in that example, if I was to run a code that is looking like the following, and that is only a code about writing to a file that is saying first. So we go ahead and create this file and we write the text of first. If we were to run that, then you're gonna see that we will receive first.txt and the content. Now we can also see that f1.closed used to be a boolean that returns us true. But if I was to not use context manager, meaning not use the with keyword, replacing this with those lines, then I will go ahead and also will try to run that file and you're gonna see that the file is not closed. So that's what I'm talking about background actions. When we use context managers, Python takes responsibility to do some teardown actions like closing the interaction with a file exactly in that case. So the addition of Python 3.10 is the ability to use more than one context manager by using only one time the wait keyword. And if we were to take a look at Python 3.10, how it is going to look like, you're gonna see that we can use the wait keyword and then immediately open up and close parentheses and then basically specify multiple statements, meaning multiple times of object creation, exactly like we do here. So first time we create the first.txt file and the second time we create the other file using separated variables. And now inside this statement, I can also write to the first file and the second file in one statement only. Now in older versions, that will be just an effort of copying and pasting the entire expression, meaning this entire thing here has to be copied and pasted. But that's nice that now you can use those within one statement. And let me show you that that is going to work for both of the files. So you can see that we receive first.txt with the expected content and as well as the second one is filled with the text of second. So that's a great addition to efficient your code. So you don't really have to copy and paste a lot of stuff when you want to use multiple context managers in your programs. Okay, so the next feature is about better error messages by Python. Now I will go over some quick examples where you might have created those syntax errors, but now you will see a lot better explanation about your errors. So we have a dictionary here that the value for the third key is missing intentionally. Now in older versions, you used to receive just a generic message like invalid syntax. But if we were to use this exact code with Python 3.10, then it is going to show you exactly what your problem is. And that is great, especially for new learners where you might have missed some values for dictionaries, or maybe you forgot to close the square bracket in the list, which I will be showing this exception just in a minute as well. And you can see that now we specifically see our problem. Now, if we were to do a similar code with a list, meaning having a list without closing it, so I'm trying to create a not valid list here, you can see that we receive unexpected EOF while parsing. So that's just referring to 
how the next line is not filled here because it refers to line number two and it expects for a closure somewhere. But if I was to grab this code and paste this in, in the interpreter of Python 3.10, then I will receive square bracket was never closed. And that is just a better error handling. It will help you to see exactly where your problem is. So there are a lot of improvements when you have some syntax problems when you try to execute your code. And that is a perfect thing, especially if you are a new Python learner, because those exceptions will help you to indicate where exactly your problem is, because the syntax error messages are improved a lot in Python 3.10. So if you just started to learn Python, then I definitely recommend you to download the latest version so you can experience those improvements. All right, so the next feature is about type hints in Python. Now, we know that we are allowed to specify a hint for the type of variable that is going to be received in this function. Now, for this function, we probably understand that we would not like to pass in strings because we try to multiply a number by another number here. So it makes sense to go ahead and use a hint of int like that. So we will only receive an integer and that's good because now we can only pass in integers and if we were to pass in strings, then you can see that PyCharm is automatically going to complain. So that is great. But what happens in a case that I would like to pass in 4.5 like the following. That's also something that is legal in Mac because you can multiply 4.5 with 4.5. But unfortunately, this complains about how we should be passing an integer and not a floating number. Well, now that is fixed in Python 3.10 because you can specify more than one candidates for the types of variables that a function could receive. So the way that this is going to work is by the following way. And you can see in the fixed example here, now we have the exact same function and you can see that the hint here is integer or a floating number. So the pipe stands for an or expression. You can go ahead and specify more than one candidate for a parameter that you would like to receive. And in our case, it is an integer or a floating number. And that's going to work in both of the cases, right? So now if I run this, you can see that we receive the expected result. And I will receive the expected result as well as when I pass in an integer. And that is just a great improvement by Python 3.10. Now I will be showing one more code snippet that is related to that improvement that's going to be extremely efficient in your projects. Let's take a look. Now in case that you are not using functions and you basically want to validate the type of your variables. So in that case, you can use the built-in function of isInstance. And you can see that I try to check with an if statement if it is an integer or it is a floating number. And if that is, then basically run the following code. And now you can decide what you'd like to do if that is not an integer and also not a float. But check out how cleaner it is going to look when you use the pipe expression. So you can see that I only use the is instance one time and I only pass in integer or float like that. And that is just cleaner and shorter code that does the same thing for you. So this pipe expression is taking over in more areas in Python from version to version. I also remember an improvement by using this pipe expression in Python 3.9 when you want to merge dictionaries. So the pipe keyword is taking control in different areas in Python and it is a great idea to get used to it when you develop your projects. Okay, people, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will use at least one of the features that I have covered in this video and let me know this in the comment section. So as usual, be sure to hit the like button and as well as subscribe my channel so you will never miss a video and I will see you very soon.